Right then, let's uh, cover the big news of the week, which focuses on MotoGP, because they are back this weekend, and it's the first European round of the season. Uh, and as we've been seeing uh, in recent editions of this show on Bike Live, the uh, picture of the following season's grid lineup gets confirmed earlier and earlier with every passing season. Head of the fourth race of 2018, KTM have already confirmed their lineup for 2019. Yes, you all thought it was some sort of coincidence that King was on this week, didn't you? Uh, KTM have confirmed their rider lineup, and um, yeah, let's go straight to the KTM correspondent of Bike Live, uh, King. Your lineup for next season is Paul Espargaro and Joan Zarco. Happy with it? Yes, I think it's I think it's a solid lineup for where the team uh, is aiming to be at next season, which is uh, kind of a step up from where they are this season. They're they're ch- ch- touching the top ten at the moment. In terms of race results, they'll be looking to try and get into sort of regular top six, as I would have thought, um, next season's rate. Um, from from Joan Zarco's point of view, because he's the big headline news that he is joining mm. KTM. We'll talk about Paul in a moment, who's staying put uh, at KTM. Um, but what does this move tell you about Joan Zarco? Because it sounds, if we believe what we hear in the uh, in the general motorsport press, that Joan Zarco, KTM wasn't his only option, should we put it that way. But KTM's the option he's yeah. gone with. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like going into um, Gavin Emmett that uh, Zarko turned down a seat at arguably his team in the sport right now, and that is the Repsol Honda team. Uh, apparently, Honda did give him an offer. So, um, whether it would be for the Repsol team or whether it would be for um, the LCR team, because they still have not confirmed Taka for next year, who knows? But if the, the fact that Zarko was somewhat hinting um, at not being Mark Marquez's teammate makes me think it came from Repsol Honda itself. Um, and I have to say, that's a very brave move from Johan Zarco to turn that down. Um, openings at that team don't happen very often. We was obviously we've seen Marquez is the best rider on the planet right now, and you know you throw that in there in combination with um, Pedrosa, who is an 11 year veteran of the team. Um, I'm more surprised that Honda was like, "Yeah, we're going to get rid of him. No, we don't mind. We don't mind curbing him to get Johan Zarco," um, which kind of says it all to me. Really, that's very interesting. That's probably why Pedros has not been confirmed yet for 2019 as well. But um, no matter which way you slice it, very, very bold decision from Zarco to turn that down and basically bring KTM up, which is what he was kind of hinting at when he was interviewed in the press conference earlier today. Hmm. Um, from, King, from from Zarco's point of view, I mean, he's no doubt looking to he's looking for victories he's looking for perhaps a most gp world championship in the future and katie was still a little way away from that um but if he was offered the, the opportunity to join mark marquez at repsol honda i mean you've got to have an ego to try and win a, a moto gp world championship but if you're joan zarco is your best chance of beating mark marquez to a title to do it on the same bike or to do it with a different bike that's arguably going to be stronger because i defy any rider to walk into mark marquez's own team and beat him on equal footing yeah, that, that that seems to be the situation here. The the reasoning behind this is like, do you really think you could beat Mark Marquez with the same machinery, or you could hope that you know two or three years down the line that KTM is going to give you a bike capable of being better than the Honda that Marquez is on? Yeah, Drake, because we, we we look at Danny Pedrosa and he, he often gets sort of criticised purely because he's not as good as Mark Marquez, which is a pretty cruel thing to criticise someone <laughs> for. Yeah, um, but. You've got to say, I mean, we're not saying that Joan Zarco isn't great. He is. But if Danny Pedrosa can't beat Mark Marquez on equal footing, and Pedrosa was in the team for seven or eight years before Mark Marquez arrived, then what hope has Zarco got? Indeed, Marquez was was superior to Pedrosa the moment he walked through the door. And you're absolutely right. I mean, and, and Zarco realized that. He knows that, like, and, and to be fair, most people know that listen to, you know, that listen to Zarco and they've seen MotoGP the last few years. Marquez is doing shit on that bike that literally no one else on the planet can do. Um, like, do you want that as your matchup? You probably don't um, by by any measure. So his logic was it was kind of impossible to be Marquez's teammate. Let's bring another bike into play. And that bike obviously is KTM, but probably has the most untapped potential in the grid right now. Um, yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean... Pff- it's it's a it's a big deal. Pedrosa is a is a stunning bike rider, especially for his for his physical um, limitations with him being so small. Um, the these his achievements on that on that motorcycle are phenomenal. But like Marquez is a is a different milestone. He's a he's, he is way way beyond anything we've seen in MotoGP the last few years. And 
like Zarko is phenomenal. I mean, no one's taking anything away from him on that one. But um, <laughs> but um, yeah, for, for me, I think Zarko probably does stand a better chance of bringing another bike into play. And, you know, let's be real here. KTM factory money. And, you know, they are pouring a lot of money into that team to try and keep up with the bigger factories in play at the moment. So why not, you know, take, take that seat on and basically spearhead the team going forward? I mean, what have you made of their progress or shall I say, lack of it so far this season, King? I mean, the, the the longer it goes, the harder it's going to be for them to make progress because I guess if you're starting from a, quite a low point, it's very easy to, to make up initial progress. The harder it gets harder, the higher up the field you get. But will KTM perhaps be looking at this and thinking, well, perhaps the biggest improvement we can now make to our overall package is by getting a top tier faster rider on the bike. I mean, Paul Espargo is no scrub by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, KTM are now going to have three Moto2 titles between their two riders next season uh, in Aspargaro and Zarco. But uh, it sticks in my mind, a quote from Cal Crutchlow last season at the British Grand Prix, when he looked at KTM and he was saying how good a bike he thought it was. And he said, imagine how great it would be with a top rider on it. Um, essentially mm-hmm. st- stating, in his opinion, that neither Paul or Bradley were that top rider. Is Johan Zarco naturally going to elevate that KTM squad a level above where they are now? Oh, I... I... I wouldn't say with 100% certainty, but y- you don't want the bottleneck on your team being rider ability because you w- you don't want to be in a position where you don't know how good your bike is because you're being held by- back by the riders that you have. Ha- having the best rider available kind of lets you gauge how well your bike is and where you should be, you know, focusing development of the bike, uh, you know, during the year and during the off season. And, and I would have to say, even in my heart of hearts, Dre, and everyone knows that I'm, mm. I'm a fan of, of the rider that's getting replaced um, at KTM by Zarco. But Bradley Smith, who we'll talk about in a much greater detail in a moment, has had one outstanding season in MotoGP, one season that matches up with Zarco's 2017. Um, and that was Bradley Smith's 2015, where he finished sixth overall in the championship and was the top independent mm. in the championship. Um, but it has to be said that since then, he hasn't really hit those heights, and he hasn't really, I don't think, been the same since that broken femur he had midway through 2016. Um, so I don't think there can be any doubt from KTM's point of view that their rider lineup for next season is an upgrade. Zarco, at the moment, is an upgrade on Bradley Smith. Um, I'd say so. But um, how, much, how much longer do you think Sean Zarco is going to have to wait here? Because I don't think KTM are quite in a position yet where they can we can say with certainty that they're going to be able to give Zarco a bike the match of what he's got at the moment next year. I mean, Zarco signed a two-year contract, and we might be talking 2020 before Zarco is in a position to trouble the podium on that KTM. He's going to have to be patient with this. He has, and you know what the thing is as well, given his age, he might not be very much right now, Johan Zarco. He's already in that sort of prime window you normally expect out of bike riders of of that sort of alien category between maybe 27 and 32. Um, Zarko's entering that window because he was a late bloomer to get to MotoGP. He, he, like, I'm glad, if anything, MotoGP has sort of shied away from automatically hiring the best young gun out there. I mean, we've seen a new wave of more experienced riders come in, like Xavier Simeon, like... Johan Zarco, like Thomas Luti, who again, like a lot of these guys were intermediate class veterans. Um, but yeah, like he might be on a bit of a, a bit of a time bomb here because, like I said, he's in his prime right now. He might be on the not so bright side of thirty by the time that KTM bike is is good enough to be thinking about race wins and podiums, which is which KTM clearly aren't there in the moment. And if anything, they might have actually taken a slight step back compared to where they were at the end of last season. It looks like the goalposts have been moved a little bit again um, in the current field. So it might be another season before we really start talking about KTM as, you know, potential podium sitters and and, and where, do you, where do they go from there, essentially. But yeah, Zarko, I mean, he, I think he knows it's going to be a rebuilding effort, but... This is the guy who says I would rather bring another bike up than you know than than try and take on Mark Marquez directly, and that was always like he, he thinks he's on that sort of level. So let's see, like let, let's 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 see how good he really is. Um, it's a hell of a challenge. It's probably the most ambitious I've seen in MotoGP for some time, especially for a rider of his quality to go from okay, Tech Three isn't a top tier team, but Zarco certainly performed. Like he's like he's been on the top team of that 2016 Yamaha and the what Tech Free's resources have given him 
Um, and I can't remember the last time he's done that. And a, a top tier rider has gone from that one end of the grid to essentially the other in KTM, who are kind of in that lower midfield, bomb on the point sort of category right now, where, you know, average maybe 12th to 15th, that sort of ballpark. It's very ambitious. So I, I, I kind of applaud Zarco for um, you know, taking such an alternative path. But at the same time, that makes the challenge that much greater. Yeah, I mean, if you're KTM and you're looking for a rider to spearhead your factory team and your, your aims to move up the grid, Zarco is probably the best rider there is available to spearhead.